The National Firearms Act, NFA, 73rd Congress, Session 2, CH 757, 48 STAT 1236, enacted on June 26, 1934, currently codified as amended as IRC CH 53, is an act of Congress in the United States that, in general, imposes a statutory excise tax on the manufacture and transfer of certain firearms and mandates the registration of those firearms. The act was passed shortly after the repeal of Prohibition. The NFA is also referred to as Title II of the Federal Firearms Laws. The Gun Control Act of 1968, GCA, is Title I. All transfers of ownership of registered NFA firearms must be done through the Federal NFA Registry. The NFA also requires that permanent transport of NFA firearms across state lines by the owner must be reported to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF. Temporary transport of some items, most notably suppressors, do not need to be reported. Background The impetus for the National Firearms Act of 1934 was the gangland crime of the Prohibition era, such as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, and the attempted assassination of President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1933-24 like the current National Firearms Act, NFA, the 1934 Act required NFA firearms to be registered and taxed. The $200 tax was quite prohibitive at the time, equivalent to $3,659 in 2017. With a few exceptions, the tax amount is unchanged. Originally, pistols and revolvers were to be regulated as strictly as machine guns, towards that end, cutting down a rifle or shotgun to circumvent the handgun restrictions by making a concealable weapon was taxed as strictly as a machine gun. Conventional pistols and revolvers were ultimately excluded from the act before passage, but other concealable weapons were not. Regarding the definition of firearm, the language of the statute as originally enacted was as follows. The term firearm means a shotgun or rifle having a barrel of less than 18 inches in length, or any other weapon, except a pistol or revolver, from which a shot is discharged by an explosive if such weapon is capable of being concealed on the person, or a machine gun, and includes a muffler or silencer for any firearm whether or not such firearm is included within the foregoing definition. Under the original act, NFA weapons were machine guns, short-barreled rifles, SBR, short-barreled shotguns, SBS, any other weapons, AOW or concealable weapons other than pistols or revolvers, and silencers for any type of NFA or non-NFA. Minimum barrel length was soon amended to 16 inches for rimfire rifles and by 1960 had been amended to 16 inches for centerfire rifles as well. The United States Supreme Court in 1968 decided the case of Haynes v. United States in favor of the defendant, which effectively gutted the National Act of 1934. As one could possess an NFA firearm and choose not to register it, and not face prosecution due to Fifth Amendment protections, the act was unenforceable. To deal with this, Congress rewrote the act to make registration of existing weapons impossible except by the government, previously, an existing firearm could be registered by any citizen. In addition to fixing the defect identified in Haynes, the revision tightened definitions of the firearms regulated by the Act, as well as incorporating a new category of firearm, the destructive device, which was first regulated in the Omnibus Crime Control and Safe Streets Act of 1968. NFA categories have been modified by laws passed by Congress, rulings by the Department of the Treasury and regulations promulgated by the enforcement agency assigned to known as the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives or ATF. Categories of Firearms Regulated The National Firearms Act of 1934, NFA, defines a number of categories of regulated firearms. These weapons are collectively known as NFA firearms and include the following. Machine Guns this includes any firearm which can fire more than one cartridge per trigger pull. Both continuous fully automatic fire and burst fire, e.g., firearms with a three-round burst feature, are considered machine gun features. 
the weapons receiver is by itself considered to be a regulated firearm. A non-machine gun that may be converted to fire more than one shot per trigger pull by ordinary mechanical skills is determined to be readily convertible, and classed as a machine gun, such as a KG-9 pistol, pre-ban ones are grandfathered. Short-barreled rifles, SBRs. This category includes any firearm with a buttstock and either a rifled barrel less than 16 long or an overall length under 26. The overall length is measured with any folding or collapsing stocks in the extended position. The category also includes firearms which came from the factory with a buttstock that was later removed by a third party. Short-barreled shotguns, SBSs. This category is defined similarly to SBRs, but with either a smooth bore barrel less than 18 long or a minimum overall length under 26. Silencers. This includes any portable device designed to muffle or disguise the report of a portable firearm. This category does not include non-portable devices, such as sound traps used by gunsmiths in their shops which are large and usually bolted to the floor. Destructive Devices, DDS There are two broad classes of destructive devices. Devices such as grenades, bombs, explosive missiles, poison gas weapons, etc. Any firearm with a bore over 0.50 inch except for shotguns or shotgun shells which have been found to be generally recognized as particularly suitable for sporting purposes. Many firearms with bores over 0.50 inch, such as 10 gauge or 12 gauge shotguns, are exempted from the law because they have been determined to have a legitimate sporting use. Any other weapon, AOW. Firearms meeting the definition of any other weapon or AOW are weapons or devices capable of being concealed on the person from which a shot can be discharged through the energy of an explosive. Many AOWs are disguised devices such as pens, cigarette lighters, knives, cane guns, and umbrella guns. AOWs can be pistols and revolvers having smooth bore barrels, e.g., HNR handygun, Serbia Super Shorty designed or redesigned to fire a fixed shotgun shell. While the above weapons are similar in appearance to weapons made from shotguns, they were originally manufactured in the illustrated configuration and are not modified from existing shotguns. As a result, these weapons do not fit within the definition of shotgun or weapons made from a shotgun. The AOW definition includes specifically described weapons with combination shotgun and rifle barrels 12 inches or more but less than 18 inches in length from which only a single discharge can be made from either barrel without manual reloading. The ATF Firearms Technology Branch has issued opinions that when a pistol, such as an AR-type pistol, under 26 in overall length is fitted with a vertical foregrip, it is no longer designed, made, and intended to fire when held in one hand, and therefore no longer meets the definition of a pistol. Such a firearm then falls only within the definition of any other weapon under the NFA. In 1938 Congress recognized that the Marble Game Getter, a short .22-.410 sporting firearm, had legitimate use and did not deserve the stigma of a gangster weapon and reduced the $200 tax to $1 for the Game Getter. In 1960 Congress changed the transfer tax for all AOW category firearms to $5. The transfer tax for machine guns, silencers, SBR, and SBS remained at $200. Parts associated with NFA items In general, certain components that make up an NFA item are considered regulated. For example, the components of a silencer are considered as silencers by themselves and the replacement parts are regulated. However, the repair of original parts without replacement can be done by the original manufacturer, FFL gunsmith, or by registered owner without being subjected to new registration as long as the serial number and the dimension, caliber, are maintained. The length may be reduced in repair, but cannot be increased. Increasing the length is considered as making a new silencer. Suppressor is the term used within the trade-slash-industry literature while the term silencer is the commonly used term that appears in the actual wording of the NFA. The terms are often used interchangeably depending on the source quoted. Silencers and machine guns are the most heavily regulated. For example, in Ruling 81-4, to 
ATF declared that any AR-15 drop auto sear, DOS, made after November 1, 1981 is itself a machine gun, and is therefore subject to regulation. While this might seem to mean that pre-1981 sears are legal to possess without registration, ATF closes this loophole in other publications, stating, regardless of the date of manufacture of a drop in auto sear, possession of such a sear and certain M16 fire control parts is possession of a machine gun as defined by the NFA. Specifically, these parts are listed as, a, combination, s, of parts designed solely and exclusively for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun and are a machine gun as defined in the NFA. ATF Machine Gun Technology Letters written between 1980 and 1996 by Edward M. O. and the then Chief of the ATF Technology Division defined solely and exclusively in all of his published and unpublished machine gun rulings with specific non-ambiguous language. Owning the parts needed to assemble other NFA firearms is generally restricted. One individual cannot own or manufacture certain machine gun sear, fire control, components unless he owns a registered machine gun. The M2 carbine trigger pack is such an example of a combination of parts that is a machine gun in and of itself. Most of these have been registered as they were pulled from stores of surplus rifles in the early 1960s. In some special cases, exceptions have been determined to these by ATF. A string or shoelace that could be looped around the cocking handle of a semi-automatic firearm and then behind and in front of the trigger in such a way as to allow the firearm to be fired automatically is no longer considered a machine gun unless it is attached in this manner. Most current fully automatic trigger groups will not fit their semi-automatic firearm look-alike counterparts The semi-automatic version is specifically constructed to reject the fully automatic trigger group by adding metal in critical places. This addition is required by ATF to prevent easy conversion of Title I firearms into machine guns. For civilian possession, all machine guns must have been manufactured and registered with ATF prior to May 19, 1986 to be transferable between citizens. These machine gun prices have drastically escalated in value, especially items like registered Sears and conversion kits. Only a Class II manufacturer, a FFL holder licensed to manufacture firearms or Type 07 license that has paid a special occupational tax stamp or sought, could manufacture machine guns after that date, and they can only be sold to government, law enforcement, and military entities. Transfer can only be done to other sought FFL holders, and such FFL holders must have a demonstration letter from a respective government agency to receive such machine guns. Falsification and slash or misuse of the demo letter process can and has resulted in long jail sentences and felony convictions for violators. Owning both a short barrel and a legal length rifle could be construed as intent to build an illegal, unregistered SBR. This possibility was contested and won in the U.S. Supreme Court case of United States v. Thompson Center Arms Company. ATF lost the case and was unable to prove that possession of a short barrel for the specific pistol configuration of a Thompson contender is illegal. ATF later released ruling 2011-4 to clarify the legal status of owning such conversion kits. Removal of a weapon from classification as an NFA firearm, such as the reclassification of the original broom handle Mauser with shoulder stock from short barrel rifle, SBR, to a curio or relic handgun changed its status as a Title II NFA firearm but did not change its status as a Title I Gun Control Act firearm. Muzzle-loading firearms are exempt from the Act, as they are defined as antique firearms and are not considered firearms under either the GCA or the NFA. Thus, though common muzzle-loading hunting rifles are available in calibers over 0.50, they are not regulated as destructive devices. Muzzle-loading cannons are similarly exempt since the law draws no distinction between the size of the muzzle-loading weapons, thus it is legal for a civilian to build muzzle-loading rifles, pistols, cannon, and mortars with no paperwork, however, ammunition for these weapons can still be classified as destructive devices themselves, such as explosive shells. While an antique firearm is not considered a firearm under the NFA, some states, such as Oregon, 
have laws that specifically prohibit anyone from owning slash obtaining an antique firearm that could not otherwise own slash obtain an GCA or NFA defined firearm, i.e., felons, recipients of dishonorable discharge from military service, the mentally adjudicated, etc. Individuals or companies seeking to market large bore firearms may apply to ATF for a sporting clause exception. If granted, ATF acknowledges that the firearm has a legitimate sporting use and is therefore not a destructive device. Certain large safari rifle calibers, such as .585 Niati and .577 Tyrannosaur, have such exceptions. The phrase all NFA rules apply is commonplace. This disclaimer is usually posted in bold print from firearm dealers holding an FFL license. Registration, Purchases, Taxes, and Transfers It is a common misconception that an individual must have a Class 3 in order to own NFA. An FFL is required as a prerequisite to become a Special Occupation Taxpayer, sought Class 1 Importer, Class 2 Manufacturer Dealer or Class 3 Dealer in NFA, not an individual owner. There are generally three ways to own a NFA weapon, as an individual, through a gun trust, or as a limited liability company, LLC. Legal possession of an NFA firearm by an individual requires transfer of registration within the NFA registry. An individual owner does not need to be an NFA dealer to buy Title II. The sale and purchase of NFA is, however, taxed and regulated, as follows. All NFA items must be registered with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. ATF. Private owners wishing to purchase an NFA item must obtain approval from the ATF, pass an extensive background check to include submitting a photograph and fingerprints, fully register the firearm, receive ATF written permission before moving the firearm across state lines, and pay a tax. The request to transfer ownership of an NFA item is made on an ATF Form 4. There have been several unfavorable lawsuits where plaintiffs have been denied NFA approval for a transfer. These lawsuits include, Lomont v. O'Neill, Westfall v. Miller, and Steel v. National Branch. NFA items may also be transferred to corporations, or other legal entities such as a trust. When the paperwork to request transfer of an NFA item is initiated by an officer of a corporation, fingerprint cards and photographs of the official need to be submitted with the transfer request. This method has downsides, since it is the corporation, and not the principal, that owns the firearm. Thus, if the corporation ever dissolves, it must transfer its NFA to the owners. This event would be considered a new transfer and would be subject to a new transfer tax. The tax for privately manufacturing any NFA firearm, other than machine guns, which are illegal for individuals to manufacture, is $200. Transferring requires a $200 tax for all NFA except AOWs, for which the transfer tax is $5, although the manufacturing tax remains $200. All NFA weapons made by individuals must be legal in the state or municipality where the individual lives. The payment of a $200 making tax prior to manufacture of the weapon, although a subsequent transfer of AOWs after they are legally made is only $5. Only a Class II manufacturer, a FFL holder licensed as a manufacturer of firearms or Type 07 license that has paid a special occupational tax stamp or SOT, can manufacture NFA firearms, other than destructive devices, tax-free but they pay a larger annual tax which ranges from $500 to $1,000 to cover manufacturing. A destructive device manufacturing license or Type 10 FFL holder can manufacture destructive devices making tax-free. However a Type 07 license costs $150 for three years whereas a Type 10 destructive manufacturing license costs $3,000 for three years. Both licenses still require the payment of the $500, reduced rate, special occupational tax stamp or SOT, or the $1,000 full tax, per year to conduct manufacturing of NFA weapons that they are respectively qualified to manufacturer. The SOT reduced rate applies to a business whose sales are less than $500,000 per year.
transferable machine guns made or registered before May 19, 1986 are worth far more than their original, pre-1986 value in items like registered auto sears, lightning links, trigger packs, trunnions, and other combination of parts registered as machine guns before the aforementioned date are often worth nearly as much as a full registered machine gun. For instance, as of September 2008, a transferable M16 rifle costs approximately $11,000 to $18,000, while a transferable lightning link for the AR-15 can sell for $8,000 to $10,000. New manufacturer M16s sell to law enforcement and the military for around $600 to $1,000. Upon the request of any ATF agent or investigator, or the Attorney General, the registered owner must provide proof of registration of the firearm. In a number of situations, an NFA item may be transferred without a transfer tax. These include sales to government agencies, temporary transfers of an NFA firearm to a gunsmith for repairs, and transfer of an NFA firearm to a lawful heir after the death of its owner. A permanent transfer, even if tax-free, must be approved by ATF. The proper form should be submitted to ATF before the transfer occurs. For example, lawful heirs must submit a Form 5 and wait for approval before taking possession of any NFA item willed to them. Temporary transfers, such as those to a gunsmith or to the original manufacturer for repair, are not subject to ATF approval since they are not legally considered transfers. ATF does, however, Recommend filing tax-free transfer paperwork on all such temporary transfers, to confer an extra layer of legal protection on both the owner and the gunsmith. Criminal Conduct The Act makes certain conduct a criminal offense, in relation to engaging in business as a manufacturer, importer, or dealer with respect to, NFA, firearms without having registered or paid a special occupational tax, sought receiving or possessing a firearm transferred to oneself in violation of the NFA, receiving or possessing a firearm made in violation of the NFA, receiving or possessing a firearm not registered to oneself in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record, transferring or making a firearm in violation of the NFA, or obliterating, removing, changing, or altering the serial number of the firearm. Criminal Penalties Violations of the Act are punishable by up to 10 years in federal prison and forfeiture of all devices or firearms in violation, and the individual's right to own or possess firearms in the future. The Act provides for a penalty of $10,000 for certain violations. A willful attempt to evade or defeat a tax imposed by the Act is a felony punishable by up to 5 years in prison and a $100,000 fine, $500,000 in the case of a corporation or trust under the General Tax Evasion Statute. For an individual, the felony fine of $100,000 for tax evasion could be increased to $250,000. Exceptions The United States Supreme Court has ruled in Haynes v. United States that the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution exempts felons and, by extrapolation, all other prohibited possessors from the registration requirements of the Act. The prohibited person who violates the possession prohibition can, however, be convicted under the Gun Control Act of 1968 for being a prohibited person in possession of a, any, firearm. The Atomic Energy Act of 1954 was amended in 2005 and includes a provision, 42 U.S.C. 2201A, to allow Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, licensees and authorized contractors to possess machine guns for the purpose of providing security. The Market for NFA Items Importation of NFA firearms was banned by the 1968 Gun Control Act which implemented a sporting clause. Only firearms judged by ATF to have feasible sporting applications can be imported for civilian use. Licensed manufacturers of NFA firearms may still, with the proper paperwork, import foreign NFA firearms for research and development purposes, or for government use. The domestic manufacture of new machine guns that civilians could purchase was effectively banned by language in the Firearm Owners Protection Act of 1986, also known as McClure-Volkmer. The language was added in an amendment from William J. Hughes and referred to as the Hughes Amendment. 
machine guns legally registered prior to the date of enactment, i.e. May 1986, are still legal for possession by and transfer among civilians where permitted by state law. The static and relatively small number of transferable machine guns has caused their price to rise, often over $10,000, although transferable MAC-10 and MAC-11 submachine guns can still be purchased for around $5,500. Machine guns manufactured after the FOPA's enactment can be sold only to law enforcement and government agencies, exported, or held as inventory or dealer samples by licensed manufacturers and dealers. Machine guns made after 1986 for law enforcement but not transferable to civilian registration are usually priced only a few hundred dollars more than their semi-automatic counterparts, whereas a pre-Hughes amendment registered machine gun that can be legally transferred commands a huge premium. The Hughes amendment affected only machine guns. All other NFA firearms are still legal for manufacture and registration by civilians under Form 1 and transfer of registration to civilians under Form 4, though some states have their own laws governing which NFA firearms are legal to own there. Silencers and short-barreled rifles are generally the most popular NFA firearms among civilians, followed by short-barrel shotguns, destructive devices, and any other weapons. While most NFA firearms are bought from manufacturers and transferred to civilians through a dealer, Many are made by the civilians themselves after filing a Form 1 and paying the $200 manufacturing tax. In some cases the manufacture is simple, i.e., using a pipe cutter to shorten a shotgun barrel, and sometimes quite complex. NFA Trust A NFA Trust, also known as a Gun Trust, Title II Trust, ATF Trust, or Class III Trust, is a legal trust that is used in the United States to register and own NFA firearms. Under regulations, use of a trust allows prospective purchasers of NFA items to avoid some of the federal transfer requirements that would otherwise be imposed on an individual. Like other trusts, it allows for estate planning in inheriting firearms. In 2013, ATF proposed new rules, often referred to as ATF Proposed Rule 41P, which if adopted, would require all responsible persons of an entity being used to purchase NFA items to comply with the same procedures as individuals in obtaining NFA items. In an NFA trust, a responsible person is defined as any grantor, trustee, beneficiary, who possesses, directly or indirectly, the power or authority under any trust instrument, to receive, possess, ship, transport, deliver, transfer, or otherwise dispose of a firearm for, or on behalf of, the entity. ATF finalized the rule on January 15, 2016, to become effective 180 days later. The previous requirement for chief law enforcement officer approval was eliminated, while all responsible people for a trust must now comply with the same restrictions as individual owners. Miller Case In 1938, the United States District Court for the Western District of Arkansas ruled the statute unconstitutional in United States v. Miller. The defendant Miller had been arrested for possession of an unregistered short double-barreled shotgun, and for unlawfully, transporting in interstate commerce from Claremore, Oklahoma to Salome Springs, Arkansas which perfected the crime. The government's argument was that the short-barreled shotgun was not a military-type weapon and thus not a militia weapon protected by the Second Amendment, from federal infringement. The district court agreed with Miller's argument that the shotgun was legal under the Second Amendment. The district court ruling was overturned on a direct appeal to the United States Supreme Court, see United States v. Miller. No brief was filed on behalf of the defendants and the defendants themselves did not appear before the Supreme Court. Miller himself had been murdered one month prior to the Supreme Court's decision. No evidence that such a firearm was ordinary military equipment had been presented at the trial court, apparently because the case had been thrown out at the defendant's request before evidence could be presented, although two Supreme Court justices at the time had been United States Army officers during World War I and may have had personal knowledge of the use of such weapons in combat. The Supreme Court indicated it could not take judicial notice of such a contention. The Supreme Court reversed the District Court and held that the NFA provision, 
criminalizing possession of certain firearms, was not violative of the Second Amendment's restriction and therefore was not unconstitutional. Subsequent rulings have been allowed to stand, indicating that short-barreled shotguns are generally recognized as ordinary military equipment if briefs are filed, e.g., c. cases v. United States, describing use of short-barreled shotguns in specialized military units. Uncertainty after Miller and after passage of Montana House Bill 246 The scope of the application of the Act to privately constructed firearms or devices is uncertain. Such items would normally be regulated under the Act's provisions, but are intended for private ownership only and not for sale. As the Act's application is derived from the federal legislature's constitutionally enumerated power of regulation over interstate commerce, it is unclear how privately constructed firearms or devices built solely for personal possession, i.e., not intended to be delivered into the stream of interstate commerce, are affected by the Act. It would seem they are regulated under the Supreme Court's interpretation of Wickard v. Filburn which establishes that even activities that occur solely intrastate could have such a substantial effect upon interstate commerce that failure to regulate such commerce would defeat Congress's power to regulate interstate commerce. In the landmark 1995 case of United States v. Lopez, the first decision in six decades to invalidate a federal statute on the grounds that it exceeded the power of the United States Congress under the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution, the Supreme Court described Wickard v. Filburn as perhaps the most far-reaching example of Commerce Clause authority over intrastate commerce. The Supreme Court majority that decided the 2005 case Gonzalez v. Reich relied heavily on Filburn in upholding the power of the federal government to prosecute individuals who grow their own medicinal marijuana pursuant to state law. In Reich, the court held that, as with the home-grown wheat at issue in Filburn, home-grown marijuana is a legitimate subject of federal regulation because it competes with marijuana that moves in interstate commerce. As the court explained in Gonzalez, Wickard thus establishes that Congress can regulate purely intrastate activity that is not itself commercial, in that it is not produced for sale, if it concludes that failure to regulate that class of activity would undercut the regulation of the interstate market in that commodity. Montana House Bill 246, the Montana Firearms Freedom Act, was signed into law by Governor Brian Schweitzer on April 15, 2009, and became effective October 1, 2009. This legislation declares that certain firearms and firearms accessories manufactured, sold, and kept within the state of Montana are exempt from federal firearms laws, since they cannot be regulated as interstate commerce. However, this law does not apply to a firearm that cannot be carried and used by one person, a firearm that has a bore diameter greater than one and one half inches and uses smokeless powder ammunition that uses exploding projectiles or fully automatic firearms. While it is likely to face a court challenge, and specifically intended to provoke one, this Montana law would put firearms accessories such as silencers actually made in Montana, marked made in Montana, and sold only to Montana citizens outside federal jurisdiction and not subject to the $200 federal transfer tax. As of April 2013, Similar laws had been enacted by Kansas, Tennessee, Wyoming, South Dakota, Utah, Arizona, Idaho, and Alaska and introduced in most other states. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.